I'm going to do a very quick tutorial on how to do the slipper socks uh, by Sharon Klinsky. It's a really old pattern as I understand it and I think it's been rewritten out in a few different places but it is very basic and I want to show you how I do it. It's completely free and I'll link it underneath. Um, I don't know, it seems to sometimes disappear. So what I've done is I have, I screenshot it on my phone. So I've got it as a picture. And I keep meaning to type it out so I can print it, but I never get around to it. But I've just screenshotted it there. Okay, so the first thing to note is that um, all it says for yarn is it's worked with two strands of yarn. So this is a bit trial and error. My original pair, that I made for me, which are my favourites, are made with the grey is an Aran weight yarn and the yellow is a DK weight yarn. I think it was a long time ago since I made them, but I'm pretty sure I know the two yarns I used. So I think that's a combination of Aran and DK. I've since made another one in that combination and they did come out bigger. So I think I'm going to try and do it with two strands of DK just to experiment. But these are so simple to make that you could easily make some, try it on, think it's not quite right and rip it back. It really doesn't take long to make one slip up. So I've made a pair, uh, I've made one for Phoebe, who's my nine year old. And I've done this using two strands of Aran weight yarn. Oh, I should also say, by the way, that for these, and for this, I've used a six millimeter hook. Um, so I've made this one for Phoebe um, using two strands of Aran weight yarn and I tried it on as I went to make sure that the foot part was fitting her and I eliminated some of the rows in the back foot part. Unfortunately, I haven't written it down so I'm gonna have to do it by eye by looking at the first sock. <laughs> the yarn I'm using is a bonus DK yarn. It's an Aran weight from Hobbycraft. Um, and I think it's 100% acrylic, although it might have some wool in it, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna hold it double. And for the first part of it, of the pattern, you chain two, and then you um, make a flat circle according to the instructions. So you work um, five single um, crochet stitches into the um, second chain from the hook. Um, and then you do three single stitches into each of those stitches around. So that's nice and simple. So, chain two. I've got F written on my hand by the way to remind me to do my French on Duolingo later. I mustn't forget. Okay, this is the first part um, finished. I've got my 15 stitches, basically just a little flat circle. Um, so that is round two done. So we're gonna move on to round three, which is two single uh, crochets in the first stitch, and then um, one single crochet in each of the next two. And that'll bring us up to 20 um, single stitches around, and we'll still have a nice flat circle. So. And what I like to do is mark the um, rounds with a bit of waste yarn. So rather than using a stitch marker, which I'll have to keep taking off and putting back on, I'm just gonna lay a bit of waste yarn over the first stitch I'm about to work. <laughs> really hard to get. So lay it over like that and work into the stitch as usual. What was it in the first stitch? Two in the first stitch and you'll see that that bit of yarn is just underneath the first stitch and as I work around I'm going to do the same thing and bring it up so I can just keep that piece of yarn in place rather than having to mess about with stitch markers. Right I'm going to work my way around. Okay, I've completed round three. So for the next round, round four, you're only supposed to do that if you're doing the men's or women's sizes. Um, and that would take your, um, stitch, uh, your stitch count from 20 to 25. Now I'm making this for Phoebe, she's nine, and I'm gonna stay with my 20 stitches. Now, 
You might think that looks like a very small circle to start making the foot slipper but actually as you start to work it you'll see that it is actually quite wide and um, this measurement will actually fit my foot just a lot snugger than the bigger size and also it depends on what hook you're using and what size of yarn you're using uh, it's a little bit trial and error but I'm gonna now work flat or oh, as she says in the pattern work even on these 20 stitches for 12 rounds now for phoebe's one i did so for phoebe's one i did do the full 12 rounds um up to make the length of the foot so that's what i'm going to do now and each time i start a new round i'm going to move that strand over the stitch the first stitch that i'm going to work into to mark the beginning of the round. Okay, so I have done the foot. Let me just double check that I've done one, two, that's the first three rounds, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, I've done my twelve rounds. And we can see there that it's the same length as the first sock. If you can hear the telly now in the background, that's because Phoebe is now up. It's Wednesday in the half term and it's about half past eight in the morning. So I started this at about eight <laughs> and she's up watching a bit of telly whilst we wait for Daddy to get back with some breakfast. OK, so this is the bit that in the pattern sounds a bit complicated, but really isn't. So the first thing you need to do when you get to the end of the round, she tells you to chain 11. Nice and easy. One, two, three, four, whoops, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. If you can hear that banging, that's my annoying neighbor. Okay, so then you work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Not the first one, but the second one. I don't like working into the chain. I find it a bit irritating. Okay, so I've done that. And then one single crochet into each of the next um, nine chains. So that will take you all the way back down to the beginning. Because you've missed the first, you, you chained 11, you missed the first one. And then you single crochet in the next and then you do nine more, that equals 11. So let's do all of these. Okay, so this is what it looks like after you've done the chain 11 and then worked all the way back down, bit weird. So just to give you an idea of what this bit forms, it forms, oops, the front of the slipper there it will all become apparent in a minute so you're at the bottom of your chain 11 you've made oh you've got yourself in a tanglement hold on <laughs> okay so we're at the bottom of our um chain 11 we've made our single crochets all the way down now we're just going to pick up the stitches back in the round and work our way back round until we meet the chain again. So you can see where my green stitch marker is to mark the beginning of the round. I'm going to start in that stitch. There's no need really now to mark the rounds because we're actually going to be working backwards and forwards from this point on. So you will work the same amount of stitches that you had in the round. So that's 20. So that's one, two, three, four, five, 17, 18, 19, 20, perfect. So I am now, I've done my 20 stitches in the round. You can see where my hook is there. And I'm back on the other side of the chain 11 here. So the next instruction is to make a single crochet in each chain of the opposite side of the beginning chain, which sounds complicated, but isn't. You're looking for the bump. Oops. Fortunately, because I'm using really thick yarn, they're quite easy to see. I'll just use my hook to point it out. These, there's a little bump here. This is a bump. 
this is a bump, this is a bump, this is a bump. These are the other side of the change you made at the beginning. So just to check that you're going to be in the right place for the beginning stitch, count them. So you should have 10 to work into. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then this very last one on the end here, 10. So it's, it's a bit hard sometimes to read, but as long as you keep counting, um, you're not gonna go too far wrong. So we're gonna work a single crochet into that first bump there. And then into that next bump there. That's two. Into the next one. That's three. Into the next one. Might have to wriggle it a bit sometimes. Eight, nine, ten. There we are. So you now have you now have your ten single crochets that you made down this side and your ten single crochets that you've made up the other side. And from now on you're going to be working backwards and forwards in rows. That's the hardest bit. You've done the hardest bit. <laughs> so you're going to chain one and turn it round. And you're going to go back down the row of single crochets you've just made into those back bumps. But you're going to work in the back loop only. So the instructions say um, Du, 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 chain one turn you should have 40 um, or 45 single crochets so that's um, the original 20 or 25 that you had in the foot and then 10 up each side of the chain so that's great if you're unsure just give it a quick count and now from now on it says single crochet in the back loop of each single crochet rows two to nine single crochet in the back loop of, loop of each single crochet crochet across, chain one and turn. So I find it helpful to mark this row, this first row, just because I find it hard to count otherwise. So let me just get a stitch marker. So in the back loop means the loop furthest away from you when you're looking at that V shape in the top of the crochet. So in there and do couple of stitches and then I'm just going to mark that first one just so I know that that's row one because I'm not going to count every row as I go I'll just count it when I'm done <laughs> so for now on you're just going to work in the back loops of all of those stitches all the way around until you get back up the other side opposite where your stitch marker is Okay, so I've come to the end of that round and now I'm going to chain one, turn it round and again work in the back loop all the way back. So we are now, as you can see, working in rows and we're now on row three of the leg part and if I just flatten it out to show you, whoops, just dropped my ball of yarn and whacked the tripod at the same time. This is how it's beginning to look. So you've got the foot part here, and then the bit you're currently working in rows is forming the foot. And every row you work is going round the bottom of the foot so that it will form these ridges. These are worked in rows, you see? So you keep doing that. Now it says um, you work rows two to nine before you start the decreases. And I'll, I'll come back to show you the decreases. Now I didn't do that, I actually worked less for Phoebe's and I did write it down somewhere but I can't remember where I wrote it down to remind me. So I'm going to count to see how many I did for Phoebe's and let you know and then we'll come back and do the decreases. Okay I'm back and you're going to notice a few things different. One I've painted my nails, two the tablecloth has changed and three the lighting will be different because it's a different day. Um, it's been a couple of days since I started filming the tutorial. It's the first chance I've had to finish it. So I've finished now working backwards and forwards flat um, around the foot and I've worked out that the pattern says to work rows two to nine 
um, in the back loop of each single crochet across. I've worked rows two to eight. I'm just going to double check that. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So I've uh, I've um, only done up to um, row eight rather than nine to make it a little bit shorter because obviously this is for a child. So now we're going to do the instructions for the first decrease row. So we're going to chain one. And then we're going to single crochet as we've been doing all along in the back loop. And the pattern says for the child size, that's three, to go down to 18. So that's three, four. Okay, so for the adult size, it's slightly different. You work 20, uh, but for the child size that I'm doing, it's 18. And then we're going to make um, two decreases. For the adult size, you make a decrease, single stitch one, and then another decrease. But for the child size, it's just one de uh, two sets of decreases. So what I do is I put my hook into the back loop of one stitch, draw up a loop, put my hook into the next stitch, back loop, draw up a loop, and then I pull it through all three loops on the hook. And I'm going to do that again. Through the back loop of one stitch, pull up a loop. Through the back loop of the next stitch, pull up a loop. Three loops on your hook, pull it through. And that's your second decrease. And then that leaves 18 single crochets to work up the other side. So one, Two, seventeen, and eighteen. Okay, that's the first decrease row made. There are three decrease rows, so now we're going to make the next one. So we're going to chain one, turn it round, and the pattern says to work in the back loop for the child size. We're going to work down seventeen stitches, and for the adult size, it's nineteen. So one. and 17. So I'm going to make my two decreases again. I'm just going to double check that I've counted that correctly. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. Yep. So once again, through the back loop, pull up a loop. Through the back loop of the next one, pull up a loop. Three loops on your hook, pull it through. That's a decrease. Through the next loop, pull, uh, back loop, sorry, pull up a loop. Through the next back loop, pull up a loop, all the way through all three loops on your hook, and then work your 17 stitches in the back loop up the other side. Then we're going to chain one and turn, and this is the last decrease row. And for the child size, we're going to work 16 stitches, and the adult size would be 18. So that's three. Fifteen, sixteen. Remembering, of course, that in this section we're always working in the back loop of all of the stitches. Okay, so two more decreases. You've got the idea. You can hear that scratching noise. That's um, the cat. It's not our cat. It's the cat that lives next door, who thinks she lives here, which she doesn't. <laughs> so. There you go, two T creases made, and then finally we're going to work our 16, 16 uh, back loop stitches all the way back up to the top, and then we're going to finish it off. Okay, I brought the camera a little bit closer for this bit, because what we're going to do now is finish off the back. So first of all, I'm just going to double check that I've got the right measurements to match the other sock by holding it in front and I can see yes I think I have once I've done the back bit yes I think I have 
but if I have made a mistake it's not a big deal to have to rip it back a bit because these are so quick to make okay so we're going to chain one Oops. and then we're going to turn our work like that so you're going to hold, have your work you've got your, your um, hook is on the back of the two pieces that are together and then you're going to join them with slip stitches through the um, back loops of each stitch. I'm going to see if I can get this nice and close. So the first stitch you're going to go through is the one nearest to you, back loop. And then you're going to put your hook through the corresponding stitch on the other side. And it's through the back loop, but obviously because you're holding it this way, it is the loop nearest to you. So that one there. And then you're just going to pull your loop all the way through as a slip stitch really hope you can see this so through the back loop of that one and the back loop of that one which is the loop nearest to you pull it through and all the way through the loop on the hook and you've made a slip stitch and you're going to do that all the way down the back of the sock to join the two pieces together Oops. Okay, when you get to the very, very end, it can be a bit tricky to see because those two last stitches are a bit at an angle, but you can wriggle your hook in there and get those stitches. But as long as you don't have a hole that's gonna cause problems, you're all right. Pull it through. And then to finish off, I always make another little um, slip stitch to fasten it off. I'm gonna cut it, leaving a bit of a tail so we can weave it in. Put it all the way through. And then it's just a case of weaving in the ends and giving it to the recipient. So there you have it. A pair of child's slipper socks. That's all the ends woven in. So before we go and give them to Phoebe, I just wanted to say that, have a play about with these. Like I say, I've, I've always just experimented with them and they're so quick that if you make a mistake or they don't quite fit, it's so easy to just rip back and add a few rows or take a few rows out. Um, I would suggest um, playing about with what yarn you want to use. I've said this one's uh, an Aran weight held double, but I've made them with DK weight held double or with an Aran weight and a DK weight held together. Do the foot, see that it um, fits you width-wise, um, and then just have a have fun with it. It's really, really easy to do, and it's not hard to undo your mistakes. Enjoy. What do you think, cat? That's not our cat. Yeah, you don't care.